save this piece of paper. These are my notes from the Pure Bible Study uh, that came out yesterday, and I didn't even get close to being done here. And somebody sent me an email this morning. Um, I went through my emails very quickly, and if I didn't respond to yours today, I do apologize. Uh, it's just one of those days. But anyway, someone uh, emailed me today saying, Pastor Mike, man, that Bible study, but here's where you ought to go next. And I actually already have it uh, in my notes to go there, and I hope I don't lose those. Uh, but anyway, the question that Lori asked is a good question. Um, because, and let, let me kind of explain this a little bit. If, you don't, if you're not up to speed on GMO, um, GMO is not General Motors oatmeal. Okay, genetically modified oatmeal is more the case, and we know that companies like Monsanto and uh, others have been have been tweaking the seeds. They have been uh, they'll take corn, they'll take barley, they'll take wheat, uh, they'll take soybeans, they'll take anything that they can get their grubby Monsanto rich hands on. And they have scientists with lab coats and, and, and big glasses and everything else. And they have Petri dishes and, you know, little things that squirt fluid into a little test tube and spinners. They have all of these things uh, available to them. And they, are, they have been for years modifying the genetic structure of seeds. Um, I don't know if you know this. When you drive through farming area, and um, you see fields of some sort of, uh, let's say, soybeans or rice or corn or whatever it is, a lot of times like you'll see a sign there, and it'll say DeKalb or it'll say something else. DeKalb, D-E-K-A-L-B, is one of these companies that makes these seeds. And you'll see a sign there with their logo, and then you will see um, a, like a, some sort of letter and number combination. That is letting, I guess, the farmers know whoever that such and such kind of seed is in this area here. And if you go down the road a little bit, you'll see a different sign. Uh, and kind of what they're doing is they're testing out what seed produces the best yield. Here's the interesting thing, um, is that that seed, by and large, it has been modified genetically. Uh, now, um, there is, you know, is it wrong um, we learned about in seventh grade biology about Gregor Mendel and his his uh, uh, hybridizing or whatever it is, uh, making hybrid flowers and this and that and the other by, um, I can't remember the what they was doing, but in, Paul talked about it in Romans chapter 11. Uh, grafting, there we go, grafting, uh, it, which is, you know, a, a common thing for, people who raise things to do, grafting things in. And Paul wrote about in Romans chapter 11 about those that are grafted in, and that is you and I as Gentiles who were not part of the original vine, we have been grafted in and, not, and are now partakers of that vine, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and so some of that has been going on for, for countless ages. But we're going way beyond that with our test tubes and our beakers and our spinners and everything else that they have. We're going way beyond that, and we're actually rewriting the book. We're actually doing what God said, don't do this. We're rewriting um, that seed's DNA. We're adding to it. We're taking away from it. And my, my personal opinion is, um, is that what, what has been tested and worked on for years in genetically modified foods um, is that's been sort of like the experimental grounds for moving into genetically modified human beings okay um, and so the question is, um, is have are they already if if we're eating let's say I go to the store and I buy a loaf of bread and that bread uh, has been made from wheat that has been genetically modified uh, the question that uh, Lori is asking is, does that mean that I am, I am eating something that is changing my DNA or adding to my DNA and adding a third strand without my knowledge? Um, I don't think so. 
Okay, I really don't think so. Um, it it was. We're, I I think we're living in an age right now where we are we're 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 learning more about the scriptures. It's not that we're adding to the scriptures. It's not like there's new revelations. It's just that we're like every other generation that has had the word of God in their hands. When they look out over the scene of their life and what's going on in their lifetime, they can look in the scriptures and say, this is that which was spoken. And we're in a situation now in our time where we're looking out over the landscape of the world in the landscape of our time, and we can see what's going on, and we can clearly see that what's in this Bible matches exactly what's going on out here and vice versa. And so I'm not talking about any new explosive revelations or any new scripture or anything like that. I'm just talking about we're looking at the Bible and we're going, yeah, this, this makes a lot of sense here. Um, we had this concept. I had this concept all the time growing up. I don't know if you remember, uh, there was a movie. This was back in the day when uh, churches, you know, we would rent these we would rent these films. We actually uh, stuck away in a, I don't know if we got rid of it or not, uh, but we had a little screen and we had a little 16-millimeter uh, movie projector. And there was a movie that came out in the early 70s called A Thief in the Night. I don't know if you remember that or not. Uh, and, buddy, it was a hippie movie. I won't tell you what. But it was a movie designed uh, to get people to think about the, you know, the idea of the rapture and, and everybody going and uh, then there was a sequel to it uh, called The Mark of the Beast or something like that. I don't remember what the or Sound of Thunder or whatever. Uh, but the, there were sequels to it, and it showed these people being, being taken to these centers, dr kicking and screaming and being forced to take the mark uh, of the beast. Okay? And uh, I remember as a young whippersnapper watching this and going, they're not going to give me the mark of the beast. I'm going to be kicking, and I, well, I'll tell you what, I was scared to death. Um, I, I, I want to read, I want to read uh, the, the book here, the scriptures, uh, concerning what is going to happen. And there's a word here that I've, that I've kind of keyed in on in some teachings in the past. Uh, the false prophet, in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15, the Bible says he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, um, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. That, okay, that's, you know what? That's encouraging. That's encouraging to me. Uh, it doesn't scare me to think that for living the life of Jesus Christ that the devil wants me dead. That doesn't scare me. Uh, it would scare me um, if the devil wasn't after me. That's, that's when I should be scared. But it says in verse 16 of Revelation chapter 13, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. Remember, there's six things there. Uh, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. The, the key word here is he causes them. Okay? He causes them. And with that idea, and if you remember we did a video here a while back about subliminal advertising and the effect that it has. Um, and it's very interesting, the subtle ways at which the devil is incorporating ideas into people's minds nowadays. That, that just fascinates me to no end. Uh, 